We're now joined by Tom Maxwell of Hell Yeah. How are you doing today, Tom? I'm doing all right. Well, it's good to hear that you're on demand. We can't wait for mayhem. But if we can uh, go back a second, you know, tell us about how, you know, what age you got involved in music. You know, who were some of your musical heroes and, you know, when when you started picking up the guitar? Oh, man, I'd have to take you back uh, to my little kid, my little boy's age, about six or seven years old. You know, my my father played in bands, uh, it was mostly local stuff, but, uh, you know, it, it, music was always in the house. You know, my I, I'm kind of like the, the kid who grew up around all the, the 70s guys, you know, and, kid, and girls, you know, they were kind of the leftovers from the hippie generation that still hung around, you know, my grandmother's house, a whole bunch of kids, teenagers that just partied and had acoustic guitars and played music, and so, you know, it was kind of imprinted in me at a very young age and then you know i just started really really getting into stuff on my own i don't know still young 10 11 12 years old was really getting falling in love with zeppelin and the beatles always and uh, the who and stuff you know it's stuff my parents my dad listened to you know and it wasn't until you know got to school and middle school high school that I discovered Motley Crue, which changed my life forever, and uh, really made me want to be in a band. That's that's the band that, that kind of really influenced me to get in a band and want to be a rock star and just get all the chicks and all that stuff, you know. And then later in life, it was uh, you know Metallica, Slayer, Merciful Fate, you know, everything. I mean, I mean I'm, I'm, sure. I'm a real huge fan of music. You know, today I listen to. I still listen to the stuff you know that I used to listen to, whether it's Zeppelin or the Beatles, but I listen to a lot of new stuff too, and it's it ranges from pop music to country to you know real soulful English folk stuff. You know, I'm just all over the place, man. Yeah, there's good music that comes in all genres. Now I know the uh, the seeds of Hell Yeah were planted in that 2000 Tattoo the Earth tour you guys did with Mudvayne and. Slayer and Slipknot, Seven Dust, and your band Nothing Face. Uh, tell us, you know, uh, how excited you were to make that move in '06, and you know, join up with Chad and and Vinny, and actually, you know, launch Hell Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, it's it's a really cool story for me personally, actually, because you know, I when I met Chad on on the Tattoo the Earth tour. I didn't know who Mudvayne was, and uh, this Lejean from Seven does. It's like you gotta watch these guys. You know, they're a new band, they're just fucking all over the place and killer. And you know, when I laid eyes on Chad and what he was doing, I was just like, this is the coolest fucking singer, and the cool, coolest frontman I've ever seen, and I'm gonna steal him from this band one day. <laughs> and uh, you know, then we became like just fast friends from that day forward. You know, it was just we clicked and. Uh, you know, that's kind of we. You know, we always flirted with the idea of writing songs. And so, you know, fast forward a few years, and you know, he had a break in between tours and whatnot. And he came to visit me in Baltimore, and we wrote and recorded the song uh, "Waging War," which is, you know, his day, you know, that was on our first Hell Yeah record. But that song had so much staying power, and it just, it just, you know, everybody that heard it, you know, was just in love with it, and. You know, it was just something that we always wanted to do, and I think just the timing was right. You know, you know, nothing face went out with Pantera, and that's how I got to know Dime and Vinny and that and that whole crew. And you know, 2006, you know, Chad calls me and says, you know, I'm taking a break, and uh, that was probably, you know, the initial bang, the big bang of the band. You know, when we all got together and you know, finally roped Vinny in and went down there. The rest is history, man. It really is. I mean, I can, tell, I can just sit here for two hours and tell you step by step of what has happened along the way. But you know, that's that's kind of how it all started, man. Just me and him had this idea and you know, friendship. You know. Well, I know it's going on now almost ten years, but uh, you know, for Vinnie Paul to essentially come out of his his retirement, so to speak, and you know, join this band and. I know that must have been therapeutic for him. I mean, getting over the grieving of losing Dime. I mean, for him to commit to this yeah, must have been know, a great I move. It. Yeah, I mean, I, I know it has. You know, I mean, he didn't want to do it at first. You know, we, you know, it really took us, you 
know, more than more than a few phone calls to convince him to let us come down and, and get him interested. You know, but I think it's it's helped all of us. It's been therapeutic for all of us. Actually, it's helped us close a lot of doors that lingered. And you know, I think this last record really cemented what we were what we were all supposed to do together. You know what I mean? I think the last, you know, Blood for Blood was uh, the, the the catalyst of the band's career, I think. Well, I know it's been an evolution. We certainly hear it in the songs between the debut and Stampede and Band of Brothers, and Blood for Blood definitely takes it to a whole nother level. You know, talk talk about some of your favorite songs on, on the album and what they mean to you. That's really hard for me to say because I pretty much wrote all of it musically, you know, me and Vinny, and so I stand behind every single one. You know, there's no, there's no like real favorite. I'm just, it depends on the day, you know, I guess. But I don't know. I think Hush is is a very important song for me. Um, you know, that was that was written in the studio, which is me and Kevin put it together without the band even knowing and. It was kind of like a therapeutic type of song. You know, I was, you know, suffering from some homesickness, and you know, just, you know, in that in that in that dark world, I guess, you know, just being away from home and needing a break, I was overwhelmed, and you know, I just went in one day, and you know, that song kind of really uh, elevated my spirit, and the fact that it's out there and doing well, and people are loving it. There's a lot of good stuff that's surrounding that song right now and it's, it's kind of a personal victory you know what I mean and I love them all man you know I, 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 you know Say When is amazing it's it's a probably the heaviest song I've ever recorded with this band you know and Vinny came in with that drum idea and I had to you know what, what I mean to write something on top of it and it just turned into such a and I can go on and on. Moth is amazing. You know, Blood for Blood is kick ass. Cross the Bear. I mean, right now our set is is the whole album except for maybe three songs. That's it. Wow. And we're almost at the point now where you know we will be playing the entire new record and using old songs as just kind of filling in the gaps of our set. And that's exactly what I wanted to do. Well, you guys are definitely clicking in all cylinders. We've got Mayhem coming up. You know, you got Kevin Churko, you know, so many great records now coming out of Vegas there. And, and you guys are with 11-7 with Alan Kovac and speaking of Motley Crue and, of course, Five Finger, Death Punch, and Papa Roach. What does it mean to have a, a great independent team like 11-7 so you don't have the, the politics, so to speak, of a major label, but you've got the power of that independence? Um. Yeah, to be honest with you, I think I think it's probably been the most uh, active record label in my career as far as just being there, you know, and, and people being passionate about our band. That's one thing that goes very far with us is just passion with people and the people that we work with. And we found that with the label, we found it with the management team, you know, we've, we've been through a lot in the last few years and we've cleaned out a lot we've cleaned the house out a lot and you know it, it, I think the team that we have right now is working and we're all in it to win it and there's no you know you sink or swim man you know and you know, you're only as strong as, as the people that you're around and, and right now I'm actually the weakest link because I'm not even participating I got a fucking broken leg so I'm, I'm a, little, a little busted up about it but but anyway, to, to, to get back on track, I'm, we're happy with everything. You know, we are. We're, we have a label that believes in us. They let us have complete creative control with what we do. Um, fortunately for them, we do want to write songs that win and, and that cross many genres. You know, a lot, of, a lot of bands don't really think about these things. But for us, we don't purposely go out and write singles and, and songs. But I think that is part of our, our makeup. You know, we want to write songs that are emotionally charged that reach reach broad audiences and I think if I you know if I worked at a record label I'd want to work with a band that you know <clears throat> had worldwide domination in mind and not just you know being you know uh, having too much pride revealing with your music if you know what I mean if that makes any sense sure 
Well, we we definitely appreciate that independent spirit because, like I say, the you know the majors are in a you know a world of hurt. You know, just with the whole and good for them. Yeah, that's what you get. For the whole evolving in the industry, they're getting years. what's what's coming to them. Yeah. Talk talk about mayhem. I mean, to be on that main stage with Slayer and King Diamond King in Diamond. front of that the 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 most you know loyal audience in music. What's that going to mean this summer? It's going to mean that we're going to be winning a lot of new fans over. It's exactly what it means. You know, we're going to go out there and do what we do, and we're going to kick ass. I mean, we're playing in front of fucking Slayer, which is a band that was a big part of my upbringing and musically, and then playing with King Diamond, whose band Merciful Fate was a huge part of my musical upbringing and helped shape me as a songwriter and as a player. And, you know, I think I'm going to talk to my band about it, but I would like to cover a, a Merciful Fate song and have King Diamond come out and sing on it, you know. Because I don't, I don't, you know, as long as it doesn't inter- interfere with his set, you know what I mean? But, you know, we'll see. Wishful thinking. Well, you got to dream it and then figure out how to make it happen. You know, we, we know that... Uh, you know, Mayhem has become the new Ozfest. I mean, it's a, an amazing, you know, three or four stages and a big all-day, you know, thing. And uh, what what better to have a big outdoor summer festival, you know, with some of the greatest hard rocking bands out there. And, uh, you know, a low ticket price. I mean, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's the well, full package for the fans. Too. You know, you have to... You know, in today's economy, you really do have to keep the consumer in mind and, and give them a package that's worth the price. And this will be our first mayhem that we ever did. And believe me, we're going to go out there and, and, and crush. I, I know you can't wait to, to get out there. Now, in this evolving, you know, music industry, like you say, you've got a good independent team now at 11-7, and you've weeded out the players. you got the right unit on stage, behind the stage, and all that. What message do you have to the fans out there? Because, you, you know, this younger generation thinks they don't have to, you know, buy music. Why is it important for everyone from the fan on up to support what they what they love so this whole ecosystem, so the stores and the management and, you know, these video directors, everybody can maintain a career what they have dedicated their lives to do? Right. Well, that's a very, very... Uh good question but it's also very you know widespread answer you know what i mean i think you know that that's the nature of the beast with the internet and 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 also the nature of living in a fast food society where people need that instant gratification you know and i think part of the problem that kids have that don't want to buy music is that there's too much bullshit dog shit music out there you know i don't want to spend my hard earned money on one or two songs and the rest of the record be a piece of shit. You know what I mean? And that's mm-hmm. that's a that's a big that's just that's just fact. That's just the way a lot of music is out there today. There's no substance, you know, there's no there's no records. They're just songs and downloads, you know what I mean? It's it's you know, it's kind of uh it's sad but it just you know, there's nothing you can do about it. But I think you know, people got to look at it with common sense and, and the common, you know, responsibility with not just with music and purchasing music, but with everything. You don't go to a restaurant and order a fucking 12-ounce filet mignon and expect the chef to just give it away. You know what I mean? It's just it's the same fucking principle, you know. You, but as long as it's worth the price, you'd be willing to pay the price for it. You know, if the food is fucking great, you'll buy it. If the music is great, you'll buy it. And I think it really comes down to, like I said, it's a very wide answer. You know, I could, we could, we could, we could like go over everything, but I think it all starts with the music, man. You have to give. Like when I was when we when I was talking to Kevin Sharko before doing Blood for Blood, he says, he said to me, he goes, you have to write a record that people need, not a record that people like, where people enjoy but a record that they need in their lives and i think if we can continue that and if other bands can can figure that out then it might change some things people might actually go out and buy new records man you know or, and buy entire albums who knows you know i think you know there's still a lot of figuring out to do but you know 
I'm just going to do what I do best, and that's just keep writing songs and and uh, the best of my ability and, and <clears throat> letting it shine with the rest of my band, you know? Well, that's really where it starts, you know. If you have quality songs, quality recording, great packaging, great live show, great merchandise, I mean, that's all you can do from your standpoint. It's It's obviously of value. You know, it's just, I think, important for the artists to, you know, let this generation know, man, this is... You know, not not even just the musicians, but like like I say, there's a whole ecosystem. You know, and you know, yeah. all of us growing up with great record stores and following our favorite artists, and you know, camped out at the record store to get that new Zeppelin or ACDC album or whatever. It meant the world to us. You know, we we didn't mind paying. So as long as the companies can keep the price down, and you know, concert packages like Mayhem can keep bringing the value and the bands deliver. You know, there's no question it's worth paying for yeah. and. You know, I mean, it's it's cheap cheap entertainment to get all that for the low price. Three uh, minute yeah. warning, guys. Okay. You know, but like like I was saying, dude, we live in a fast food society now. You know what I mean? It's like people want it and they want it quick. And if it doesn't, you know, appease them within that first thirty seconds, they'll just toss it to the side. You know, and you know that's that's you know, with, with the internet, you get you know you don't have. You have every resource at your fingertips right now. You can find everything out of, everything out about a band and its members within an hour. When back in the day, all you had was Hit Parader magazine and you know, Cream or Rip. You didn't have you know the internet. You didn't have you know MTV. You know, especially in the metal world. You know what I mean? In the sure. rock world. But prior to that, you know, it was it was all you know word of mouth and buzz and just record stores. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It was a great time. Now, all that you've seen, Tom, what, what advice do you give to that young player, that young band in the garage? You know, I know the business is evolving, but still the focus on writing great songs and having a unique sound. What, what advice do you tell them, and what kind of dedication is needed to be yeah, in this I, business? I'd do it, do it the same way that I did, man. I would just listen to all kinds of music, just bring in every kind of influence that you can that, that works for you and just shape it into your own thing. and. Get in the garage with your friends and just suck. Just go and fucking suck, suck together, because eventually you're going to be playing and you're going to develop, and then you're going to be Nirvana. You know what I'm saying? It just got to get in there and just be passionate and transparent and give everything you have. And you know, it's 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 not for everybody in this world, this life. You know, there's a lot of people that want it, but you really have to live it. And and I mean recommendation is just to just write songs right 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 just develop it just enjoy yourself while you're doing it too you know and and you know we all grow up playing covers but you know it's it's the unique style it's the great songs that really stand out over time and give a band their identity so it's, you know i think it's important yeah. for people to take chances it seems lonely out there on the smallest tree branch but then again to have your own unique style and sound you got to take risks that's true, man. It's very true. It's a way to put it. You know, you really do. You have to take risk and you know, just just let those let all those flavors mix inside you and, and, and eventually it'll happen. You know, you'll 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 find your groove, some quicker than others, but it's just a matter of being original. You have to have it. You know, you have to have that original and that and you have to have songs, like I said earlier, you have to have write songs that people need in their lives. And that means being transparent and honest, not just musically, but lyrically, too. And that's a great note to end on, guys. Thank you so much, Tom. Can't wait to see you on Mayhem. Sure. 